contact has been established. Oh my god, he's on the balcony! These are Trotter's cat treats. Keeps in his backpack for this very occasion. Stunt cat! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> my bed is not a litter, please. <laughs> yeah, it's in my room right now. We have confirmation that cat is vaccinated. <laughs> stay there, stunt cat. Good night, Cap. It's round seven of the UWS, and we're here in Cran, Montana. Shake down day. It's only been two days since the race, but I kind of like this. Honestly, the race has been so short that it's nice to like have these back to backs and not have time to just like force rest. So it's like, yeah, I drive 10 hours yesterday and then straight back into it today. So I mean, just want to be riding my bike, so why not? <laughs> I told you, every race is a different kind of jank. We do a four minute XC start to the stage and then you go into all these like sketchily built features and you're like, okay, is it worth it? So everyone's looking fair enough and then the field's just too big, honestly, so it was just hectic. Choice. Yeah. Shut the <laughs> up. <laughs> you too, Matt. Shut the <laughs> up. <laughs> Quiet on set for a couple minutes. Today was uh, really sick. Uh, there's lots of variety here. That we got bike park. We got jumps. We got drops and road gaps. There's loam. There's there's everything, like, especially compared to last week, there wasn't much uh, technical, like, riding last week. This is, like, oh, you know, this is a lot more technical and uh, and super fun, and, and uh, I think everyone had a blast today in practice. There was definitely some big crashes out there today and, like, some course holds and everything, so hopefully everyone's okay. I took this, this uh, establishment to another level here. Go. Two cappuccinos. Thanks. That'll be 16 euro. What I want to say is that like with Tara's help and knowledge, I felt more confident progressing back from a head injury through monitoring all these systems because sometimes progressing through the head injury isn't necessarily comfortable. Like if I would have been on my own, I would never have practiced yesterday because I was like pushing through some discomfort, but there's also like a mental aspect to having had a big crash and just your brain like that's something you've taught me like you've your brain just registering the environment in which you've had the crash and then just being put back into that environment is quite stressful so there's tension that appears that might not even be related to the injury so like kind of like yeah just knowing that that progression might not feel all good but like it's not bad to keep pushing and then assess and monitor so PSA <laughs> So first of all, uh, we do have a history of working together and this isn't our first concussion that we've worked through. So we have all of that information and how it's worked in the past to work through. Um, there's also 
international guidelines on how to return to sport after concussion. So we would, if you were in the NHL or the NBA, you'd be following probably more rigorous protocol than, than what we're, we're running here, but it's applied worldwide to, to all sports. So it's, it's not something I've just made up. It's definitely um, evidence-based and international consensus and updated every couple of years. At minimum, a seven day after injury uh, return to racing again, and that's if you feel perfect. And then we're monitoring all the symptoms inside 24 hours from trying the next step on the progression. Uh, there's multiple systems that can be affected when you when you have a head injury, um, your neck tissue, your brain tissue, uh, your vision, your vestibular system, um, your psychological system. So there's lots of uh, different moving parts that need to be assessed and managed at each stage. And if you're not feeling great at what stage, figuring out why aren't you feeling great, what needs to be worked on and, and how do we move forward. <laughs>